Okay. It's been a while. I don't know how many days. I think five days or something. I think it's been about five days. Let me catch you up on where I've been and what's going on. I don't have my coffee, but I have water because I had coffee earlier. And I didn't get a card. Um, we gotta have a card. Let's get one. Okay. Booker T. Washington. I remember when I did this one before. I liked it and will like it again. How's everybody doing? Everybody okay? As okay as you can be. I hope. Okay, the card for today. Those who are happiest are those who do the most for others. The action is perform a random act of kindness every day. It can be as simple or as creative as you like. For those of us that are pretty much hibernating or homebound, it's a little bit difficult, um, but I'm finding through Messenger and things like that, I can do my little acts of kindness. Um, it's late, it's like almost 6.30. My stomach is hurting like hell. I had, I tried to eat healthy and I had a salad and it didn't work. It just didn't work. Uh, I got birthday cards. My health insurance company sent me one. You can always count on life insurance company, homeowners insurance, renters insurance, car insurance people, they're gonna send those cards. So, um, my Aetna care team wishes me a happy birthday. They're probably also hoping I don't get sick because then they don't have to pay anything out. And I also got a happy birthday from State Representative Mark Rossi. And he's letting me know that now that I'm really up there in age, that there's more rebates, discounts, and other benefits for me being 65 or older almost um, I can get my hunting and fishing license at a reduced cost, but I don't hunt or fish. Um, automobile registrations, I can get one at a reduced fee, but I don't have my car anymore. You guys know that. Dog licenses, I don't have a dog that lets me out. Energy assistance, um, that I do have, and that is helpful. So... Um, Prescription assistance, they're talking about PACE. Uh, so I don't need that help because I have something called um, extra help. And there's a property tax and rent rebate, which um, I could check into the rent. I could check into the rent rebate. Yeah, permanently disabled, that's me. So, two birthday greetings. I'll take them. I finished, finished Tallulah. Somebody in the comments said name her Tallulah, so why not? I just need to trim this back. And then this is my fifth one finished. And what I did with the white, so it wasn't so overwhelming, is I made it into little grids. I made a grid, and then I just did each little section. So, I just have to trim it back. And I opened up the next one. And you're not going to be able to tell a whole lot from this because it's so super dark. The colors, there's 25 colors and it's, it's a, uh, the woods, it's a wood scene with like a, kind of like a hollow where you can see in. It'll come to life. I started it, I did two colors two of the very tiny little colors, but all this, all of this is one color. They're all number ones, the whole outside. And this company, they sent me six packs of glue, which I never got before. I usually just get one, but 
there's so many um, diamonds that need to go in there. But I got six of these with this kit. I got my tray. They sent me tweezers, plastic tweezers, which I never got before. And my pen and then the, the attachment for on there and then all of my colors. And they sent me a bunch of extra plastic bags too. Um, but what I'm doing is as I'm done a color, I put it back in the bag because this company sent a bag like this so you can close it back up. And that's the first time I, I got something this convenient. So because of the, um, all the number ones, they sent me two packs of the black like that. So that's, that's a thing. But I've got 25 colors total. Two of them I already put in the drawer. I'm saving in case I miss something because with something this big and this intricate, I'm going to miss something. So I'm, gonna, I'm holding on to all of my colors. That's going to take me a little while, but it's okay. What else, you know, what else do I have to do? Uh, I talk with my daughter tomorrow at 10 o'clock. She said, Mom, give me something where you, a time where you have more than an hour, like an hour and a half. We're talking about personality types and dating, and I'm an INFJ, and an INFJ in the Myers-Briggs is uh, the smallest percentage of personality types, and we are natural-born caregivers. We're the ones that want to fix everybody, save everybody, you know, go out there and save the world, make the world a better place, all that kind of thing. I happen to be an INFJ. And uh, so we're doing a lot of talking about dating and personality types. But the one thing that she is so aware of is there's a 20 year age gap between myself and my oldest daughter. So what she was looking for when she was dating after her divorce is something totally different than I would be looking for at finishing my 65th rotation around the sun. So uh, it'll be an interesting talk. Uh, the the um, YouTube channel Psych Hacks, which is the one that she said, check, check out this guy and watch a couple of his videos where he's talking about what men are looking for and what women are looking for. Um, in relationships and so I watched three of them and she said send them to me so that we can talk about them so I did I did that so that's tomorrow in the morning and then in the afternoon my old friend's gonna come up for just a little while I need to get spring water and I need to go to the store and now without having a car which is probably the the biggest regret I have right now in my life is not having my car um, I feel so incredibly trapped in my world without my car. Even though when I had my car, I was not on the road all the time. I did not go many places. But what a difference when you do not have a vehicle parked out back. You know, it's like you feel like you're so stuck and I'm feeling like I'm so stuck. So the past couple of days have been really rough for me. My sleep has been more off. My stomach is more off. And I'm having more anxiety probably than ever right now. It has nothing to do with my taper. I'm on day 22. That's going fine. But I have a lot of external things going on that I'm just trying to work through. Um, that's definitely messing with me emotionally. And then, you know, add in the fact that this is the month of August, which I told you guys before, I just wanted to get it over with. This will be my, the end of my sixth month since Sky passed away. And um, so this will be my first birthday without him. And I just want to get it over with. Um, I want to get into September. I want to get into the cooler weather. I want to get through this summer. We had plans for this summer. I talked to you about that before. We had plans. We were going to go to the lake. We were going to go on picnics. I was going to put him in his wheelchair. And... He died a lot faster than what I was anticipating. So I'm still trying to catch up with the fact that that was not in my day timer and how to go it alone. So I'm not looking forward to this birthday. I just want it to come and go and um, start rolling into my 66th 
66th year. Yeah. Uh, so I want to thank everybody for being patient with me, even over on Messenger. Um, I haven't been on the ball as much as usual. Like I said, there's some things going on here and that I'm working on and trying to get through. And so it, my life is a little bit changed up. I haven't been feeling well. Um, I've got the pain in my spine, uh, which I haven't had in months. It's been the longest time. Actually, it was so long that I even forgot that I used to get it all the time. And after uh, Sky passed away, and I was able to kind of try to regroup a little bit and try to find my way in the world as a widowed senior woman and where my place is now. Um, all, of the, all of the stuff now that I'm hitting that half year mark um, is like, now that all the paperwork is done and all that, and I have a routine and a rhythm to my bills, um, now comes the emotional part. Now comes the time where the recognition that he's gone, what I went through while I cared for him, what it was like to take care of him as he was dying, and what it was like for me being here on my own as he was dying, um, and how I feel about the hospice company that was brought on board, and where I felt like there was a lot of dropping of the ball. Uh, I remember when the first nurse came in, the first thing she asked me was, do you want oxygen? And no one had ever talked to me about oxygen. No one had given me the pros and the cons. I never thought about it. I just remember what Sky said he wanted and didn't want, what was in his health directive, and that was he didn't want any, any outside intervention. He just wanted a pain-free death. And so in my mind, I'm like, I'm thinking no oxygen because I wanted to fulfill his wishes. Um, now I'm kind of second guessing myself because I'm seeing people on hospice and they're on oxygen. But then also over on Reddit, there's a lot of posts that I'm reading um, that people are putting on about their loved ones that had been on hospice and they're questioning why um, no food, no water, and no oxygen is given during the hospice period when a person gets to a certain uh, place in their death journey. So uh, the body cannot sustain food and water, and even the extra oxygen can be a hard on the lungs uh, when the body is shutting down. And for Sky, it felt like it happened really fast. Once he slipped into that semi-conscious state so fast. Um, so I'm questioning over and over, should I have said yes to the oxygen? I don't know. If anybody's had their loved one on hospice and you're in my group, if you would throw something in the comments, if, you, if you're comfortable doing that, talking about something like that. If you're not, please don't. I'm not, you know, it's fine. But I'm just, it's just a more curiosity at this point. Would oxygen have prolonged his death? Um, which is not something he wanted. He was not afraid to die. Uh, he just didn't want any pain in the process. So I've been thinking a lot about that lately. I don't know why. If you guys follow Kelly DeMarco, Kelly Isabel DeMarco, I talk about her all the time. I think she's amazing in the way she's handling post-cancer death of her husband, Tim. She just put out a video, a montage of um, clips from beginning to end of Tim's journey with cancer. And it's, it has music to it, but you can't play the music on um, one device. You have to put the music on a separate device and turn the music on the same time that you put the video on because of copyright issues. Um, so I didn't have a second device to match up. Um, 
Well, actually, I could have. I could have used Sky's iPad. I didn't think of that. But anyway, it's a beautiful tribute to her husband, Tim. Um, it's like 25 minutes long, but it's worth the watch if you follow um, Kelly DeMarco and where she's going next in her life, raising her teenage daughters on her own. Uh, the Weeping Widow. Um, and I want to thank Vidrana for giving me her name. I couldn't remember her channel name. It's The Weeping Widow. And she's got limes. And um, she's on her own after the sudden death of her husband. It's what, two years ago now? And she's not doing well. So if you're not following her, I don't even know what her first name is. I apologize. But if you can go over to The Weeping Willow, Widow, Weeping Widow, and just give her some support. I know that she definitely needs it. Um, so it's one day at a time for me right now. I want this month to be done and over. I don't know what I think I'm going to accomplish once the month is over. Um, the only day of my birthday, I have my psych psychiatry a visit. Visit, you know that I. It wasn't intentional. They just said we have August 19th open for me to go up and see my psychiatrist in person because I have not seen her in person in months and months. Well, once Guy could no longer go out of the house and I couldn't leave him alone, I started doing telehealth. So it's been a long time since I saw my uh, psychiatrist in person. So my friend is going to take me up on my birthday. I have a morning appointment. It's just 30 minutes and it's just a med check. Uh, so I will tell her then that I've tapered back a milligram uh, so that she can put it in my chart. And this is the last month that my PCP is practicing medicine. He is done on the 31st of August. So if there's anything more I need to ask him or tell him I need to do it before the 31st of August. That is going to feel so strange next month going to Family Center and seeing Skye's doctor. And I don't even know how I feel about that at this point. Um, I have a lot of unanswered questions uh, concerning the doctor and the way that I think things were not handled. Um, but um, the way medicine is these days, nothing surprises me anymore, which is why I try really hard to stay away from doctors as much as I can. Uh, so, yeah, it's been a roller coaster the last few days. I'm not, definitely not up to par, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I had a few days that have been super rough, and um, I miss Guy a lot. I do. I miss him a lot. I miss the us, you know, the us, the every day, the routine of what you know, and then it's not there anymore, and it's just you, and you're just spinning in circles. Like, what do I do? Where do I go? How do I do this? All the plans that are never going to happen. All of that. And that's, I think, is the biggest thing with, with um, death is that you not only lose your person, you lose your future. You lose your dreams. You lose your plans. You lose um, everything you talked about, what you were going to do. All the, you know, we're always looking ahead. We're always planning for something. Very seldom do we stay in the moment. Very seldom are we mindful and stay in the moment because we're just scared as humans to constantly look at, the what, at what is ahead. And so when your person dies and you're the one left behind, all of the dreams, all of everything, the, the security that you think you have in life, which we don't, um, is gone also. So then you have to figure out how to do life alone again and how to figure out your finances, how to survive, how to support yourself, especially once you're in your later years, like I am. And do you want to get into another relationship? Are you emotionally ready for that? Do you want to take the chance of getting into a relationship knowing that the person most likely you're going to be involved with is going to be older? So the chances of health issues and things either for you or him are very high. So you know in your heart that you may go through the same heartbreak all over again. And how many times can we do that emotionally? 
So there's a whole lot that people don't think about that we as widows and widowers go through um, this incredible silence that falls into our world very quickly. Even, even for those of us who know what's going to happen, the, the, we just can't be prepared. You can't be prepared. You, you can do the paperwork, but the everyday existence, everything is different. I mean, I've spent more time in my room, laying on my bed, doing nothing productive. I've done that now more than I have ever in my life, ever. And uh, just even getting out and taking a walk feels monumental at this point in my life. Yet I know that would be one of the best things for me is to get out and get some fresh air. Um, but there's something really missing. The last walks that I took on a regular basis were with Skye, with his, either with his walker or his walking stick, where he tried so hard to be able to walk and to make his legs work and to make his feet work. And his body turned on him so incredibly fast. And uh, so even something as simple as taking a walk brings back a whole flood of memories that um, I'm not always emotionally ready to deal with. No. So it has been a rough couple of days. I also have found that by not doing daily videos, things are harder for me to cope with because I don't have anyone in my life to bounce all this stuff off of, except for you guys. And so uh, I want to thank everybody who messaged me and said, hey, are you okay? Um, I'm as okay as I can be, and I'm trying every day to be okay. But uh, it's different. You know, change is always happening in our lives. So I'm going to go. I always say this. Thank you for choosing me in this channel. Remember to put the oxygen mask on you first. Without you being healthy, you can't help anyone around you. Um, and the old pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. Take what you want from that. We're all going through stuff. I know it. I talk to you guys. I know what we're all going through. So hang in there the best you can, and I'll be back.